Hey everybody, welcome back to Battle Ready Inc. So I've been away for a bit, so I wanted to discuss where I've been and why I've been taking such a long break, as well as it seems like I'm not the only one on a Digimon break. We're gonna discuss uh, all the reasons of why, what is going on in the game and why things are being impacted like they are. It seems like player base is dropping off in multiple regions, as well as uh, value of cards is plummeting. So let's get into this. Let's see what's going on. Also, our featured memory marker this month is a ghoulish inspired Gurimon. So absolutely stunning. This is handmade out of clay, hand painted as well, all by my wife, Digi Miyu. This is probably one of the best that she's ever done. I absolutely love the horns and everything. The paint, the purple looks absolutely stunning this is our reward for patreon this month uh as well as you can get this on her etsy page link in the description below also there you can find all of the previous memory markers for the most part that we featured on the channel in the past some of them have been retired at this point so if there's any you've been on the fence about make sure you get in there and uh pick those up before she removes them all right, so let's start it off with just me personally where I've been. Uh, I have not been switching over to another game or anything like that. I'm still just playing Digimon minus my secondary channel, which I play Star Wars Legion at. Um, but primarily TCGs, Digimon's it, okay? Like I am still hardcore into this game. Uh, I've been taking a YouTube break in general from uh, both my YouTube channels, uh, just reevaluating things like that, uh, figuring out what I want to do, where I want to go. I still enjoy making these, um, but ultimately, uh, YouTube doesn't make a whole lot of money, so just making videos is more just a casual hobby. Um, but I wanted to go ahead and you know make sure you guys are aware of that. Uh, even a channel with you know several thousand uh, you know subscribers doesn't always mean all that much. Um, so just clarify that. Just on a small break, that's all. Um, the the game was. I wouldn't say it was in a bad state or anything like that. If you've seen the regionals recently, we've had a nice diverse spread of topping decks. Now, uh, we're now into Ultimate Cup season uh, right now, currently, and that's also extremely diverse, which is really nice to see. Uh, I definitely appreciate that. Um, but for regionals, uh, I think the thing that killed the game for me, well, sort of, um, that, that made the game a little bit more uh, needless to play was... In the very first regional of the year uh, for the U.S., uh, I got my invite, all right, which we're going to discuss because today, uh, there was an announcement today about that. Um, I got my invite, so I felt like there was no driving force for me to try to do well. Uh, I had no reason to practice. I had no reason to play in locals other than just to chill with my friends. Uh, it was just literally, okay, I've got my invite. Now what I do, twiddle my thumbs for the next, you know, 10 months as I wait for finals. Um, so finding something that I enjoy without also causing a lot of grief for my local player base, i.e. playing something super busted that everybody hates, but I enjoy like, you know, setcon. Um, I don't want to do that. I don't want to inflame my, my locals. Um, so I try to find casual decks, but the issue with casual decks is I don't always have a lot of fun with them. So finding this like middle ground can be a bit of a struggle at times. Um, but that's that's all good and done. Uh, I'll, I'll be back playing literally this week back at locals uh, after taking like a three week break. Um, so I'll be back for sure now. Uh, hopefully I can keep making content for you guys. Reprint set is right around the corner, so I'm gonna be covering a lot of that. My my normal you know cards to get videos as well as uh, you know reviews and that sort of thing. So look for that in the future. Should be doing that hopefully next week. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and jump into why the rest of the player base seems like they're falling off. Um, let's uh, there's a couple different orders I want to do this in. So let's go here first. So first up is Lorcana has just launched, which is Disney's big game that they're trying to rival Magic. Literally, a lot of the mechanics, a lot of the uh, there's a lot of similarities across the board that they you know are implementing from other. Uh, decks and things like that like product wise they're like straight up copying magic i mean they're doing uh the decks the bundles uh you know they're even their booster boxes are set up in a uh, similar manner to to magic the gathering uh, 
and but the prices are insane right now in the secondary market so uh, if you're able to find them out in the wild definitely seems like the better choice to pick them up like at walmart with our msrp prices uh definitely seems like a, a good way to go here um but a lot of people are jumping onto this um i i've said this in the past but the people that originally like started playing digimon are the people that typically jump every two years to a new card game um so you know they came from other stuff you know but people came from like you know what uh buddy spirits or or whatever it was um you know they they keep jumping from game to game they play dragon ball super and then they play digimon and then they played uh battle spirit saga and then they played one piece or whichever switch that order around now they're playing lorcana it's these same people that constantly jump 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 from game to game to game and they're just moving on uh a lot of them have keep coming back repeatedly to Digimon though. They'll keep they'll try something new and they'll jump back. Lorcana though is such a broad like hey, Disney is pushing this this game, this card game to everybody. Like it doesn't matter the age. They're pushing this this card game to everybody, which is cool. I don't mind this at all. Like I don't think it's a negative. Uh, I don't have a huge desire to play it. Like it does keep nagging at me to play it though. It's like I'm a big Kingdom Hearts fan, so I've been like on, uh, you know, the Disney product line. I have a three year old daughter. Like Lorcana's like should appeal to me i'm just so committed to digimon that i don't want to make that switch also i don't know anyone else locally that's getting into lorcana uh literally one of my two card shops isn't even bother carrying the stuff um so there's that um but a lot of people are trying it and a lot of people that that are trying it are the people from this community that typically are always willing to try a new card game um and so every time this happens it pulls away for a the the player base uh of you know this this niche group that isn't playing one of the big three magic uh pokemon or Yu-Gi-Oh. if you're not playing one of those three you're probably on this other tangent of trying new card games and getting burned out really quickly that's why you're not playing one of the big three for like 15 20 years um so yeah, there's there's that. Lorcon is definitely in fact in impacting currently. We'll see if the it's like the other ones, Battle Spirits and One Piece, where people play it for a bit and then they come back to Digimon. They drop those card games and they come back to Digimon. Digimon, I think, is a really well balanced or really well designed game and people really enjoy it. So they keep coming back to it after dropping it. So just kind of keep that in mind as well. This is might might I don't know. It might just be one of those uh, another one of these uh, ship jumpers. Um, However, one thing, uh, one group of people probably will not be coming back to Digimon anytime soon, and that is the investors. So the people that buy product and they either hoard it to sell later, you know, when games get old, or the people that jump on stuff early and then sell for an insanely high price, right? Like the Enchanted Elsa card and things like that. They're, they're more interested in getting cards like that that are going for a lot of money uh, than they are for, for Digimon. So let's just look at the Digimon, uh, you know, TCG player and things like that. Look, TCG player also pushing Lorcana. Of course they're pushing Magic because Magic is still Magic and it's an absolute monster when it comes to TCG sales. Um, but right here, like not even a revolving banner. They're just like, hey, look, Lorcana right here. Like literally, it's not at the top of the page like uh, Magic is, but it's a bigger picture than than the one on Magic is. So they're really pushing Lorcana as well. It is a big money maker for sure. Um, Look at cards that were holding good value for a while here. Super hyped up cards. I mean, they were a little overhyped, but look at everything plummeting. Uh, Marcus here, uh, Shine Greymon. Uh, the market is just plummeting. Pretty much uh, from the time that Lorcana was uh, you know, coming out or right around the corner, a lot of people weren't even interested in it. I was talking to my local card shop. They were saying how it's like they asked about Lorcana and nobody was interested when orders were due, and so they didn't order it. Now that they're out people are like he says he's getting five calls a day about Lorcana if he carries it or not um so that's just how crazy that this uh Lorcana has impacted um the market basically but is that a bad thing that we're getting rid of investors out of our community the people that are like buying a product and setting these outrageous 
prices, doing buyouts on cards. Buyouts is a huge one. If we're losing a lot of those people that are doing stuff like that, the, the big money makers, you know, the, the card shop owners, like those sort of people, if they're not so worried about Digimon anymore, maybe that's a good thing. Just hold our product, you know, our sealed product, get our, you know, maybe some some uh, singles and stuff like that. But if I don't have to worry about you going on TCG Player and buying out one card and then it becoming super relevant and you've tripled the price of it, yeah, I'll greatly appreciate you going on to Lorcana and doing that in a card game I'm not playing. Um, so you Digimon fans out there that are watching this, you know, be actually kind of grateful like that. Um, I think having a game that's more accessible for people to play is way more important than having a card game that is just expensive for the sake of making money. Okay, I'd rather just have fun playing my card game. Just like YouTube, I don't make a, like hardly anything. Literally, my my income right now on YouTube. Granted, I took a, a three week break. It's twenty five dollars. I'll just be straightforward. You got twenty five bucks. That's it. That's all I'm making this month. Um, so yeah, keep that in mind. Uh, Digimon's kind of the same thing right now. It's it's not a big money making thing. You're not gonna buy a box and then uh, turn around and sell your your alts and your secret rares for as much as the box or more, right? If you're gonna pull a Shine Grain one and something else, or if you're the the God box last set was what the double arenas, the Altar Arena and the regular arena, if you got both of those, that was like hundred and thirty dollars on your eighty dollar box or less, depending on where you're getting it. Yeah. I mean you, you can't do stuff like that right now. It's gonna be really, really hard to make your money back on, on boxes. So singles are actually like it the singles have always been like the way to go but right now oh my gosh shingles are insane uh for you know all tarts like the good stuff the the high end stuff is actually pretty affordable compared to what it has been i mean this uh shine Greymon has almost uh price dropped by half i mean it, we're getting there quick okay i mean 55 uh 56 for the peak here uh, what is that 28 is the half i mean we're what, three bucks off from half uh in just a month so, yeah, I think it's going to be a great affordable time. Uh, what else is affecting the player base, though? Um, so that that's why our, our product is dropping and stuff like that, is the investors are leaving, which is A-OK -okay with me. Um, you could also view it as people are offloading their collections, and every time people are offloading cards, they keep cutting the person in front of them and getting prices lower and lower and lower and lower. The more people that are selling off their stuff, the more stuff that's going to continue dropping in price. Um, I told people about two months ago, uh, maybe three months ago, two or three months ago, hey, if you've got anything worth over 50 bucks, might want to sell it. If you're just holding on to it literally just for the value of it and you're looking to make money, if it's over 50 bucks, go ahead and, and just offload it now because you're going to lose money if you don't. And sure enough, across the board, everything is dropping. I don't know if anything has really gone up in price. And I don't think anything that was below $50 has gone over $50. It's just everything over $50 has dropped down drastically um, because all the big money maker cards, people aren't gonna be holding on to them anymore. Uh, they're not really worried about it. Now what's going on though? Um, One Piece is doing extremely well. Um, the I mean, this week alone, right? So they had, uh, I'm not a big One Piece fan. I'll just throw that out there. I, I tried multiple times to get into it. I'm just not into the big goofy silliness of the, the first parts. The fights are incredible on the anime. Like, absolutely. I've watched some of them on YouTube. I'm just like, that is so cool. I wish I could get into this show. But the, the non-fights, the downtime is just so silly and goofy. I just couldn't get into it. But uh, the anime, right? What Was it fourth gear or fifth gear, right? The... The, the cartoonish one, right? So the anime has been super popular. The Netflix series has been crazy successful uh, for like two weeks now. People are absolutely loving it. I actually do plan on watching that one. Uh, I've heard nothing but positive reviews, which blows my mind. Netflix not getting a negative review for an anime thing, an anime ad adaptation to live action they've done. Holy crap. That's remarkable. So that's really interesting. Um, so we'll see how that goes. And then, of course, the card game. Uh, this sign was at Gen Con this year. Um, 
right above the doors. I mean, that is a huge banner. That is incredible. Um, where was this love for, for Digimon from Bandai? It's absolutely starstruck like that they have basically they're like yeah 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 digimon who cares about digimon one piece one piece is where it's at even battle spirit saga uh they're like hey big cash tournament fifteen thousand dollars on the line like no other tournaments can do cash prizes but battle spirits apparently can and they can do it whenever they want but that's the only one it's like they're literally paying people to play that game like that's kind of sad that you have to literally uh incentivize people actual real money to come play your game like ouch that's not good but even that game now they're like eh, yeah yeah battle spirits it, it's whatever we've already moved on to that away from that one and now we're on to one piece now one piece is again doing extremely well so absolutely this is the time to capitalize on its popularity is right now so pushing their card game makes a lot of sense for bandai i do get it um but in doing so, um, they're pushing, pushing, pushing. They, we literally lost multiple slots at Gen Con for Digimon this year. Uh, and even the ones that did, we did get, what, the last one? It went to, uh, what, best of one? And because they lost time slot on the day of or the night before they found out, hey, you're losing uh, time. Uh, you got to be done by whatever and you can only start at this time. And it was best of one. Are you serious? We've never had best of one except for like Japan. Okay, so that's crazy that they're just like, eh, Digimon's whatever. Just like, I mean, they did the same thing to uh, Dragon Ball Super way back when. Uh, once Digimon came out, they pretty much just everyone dropped Dragon Ball Super and went to Digimon, which Bandai is notorious for doing. They'll support a game for two, three years, and then they'll they'll continue releasing product right that doesn't mean that when people say the game is dead that doesn't mean everyone just stops playing all at once the the distributors or uh the um you know bandai or whatever they don't just cut off making they still make product right they still are going to make it but they're going to give you less support uh like op support prize support things like that uh and and things like that it just the, the game slowly gets smaller and smaller and it becomes a really niche group um i went to a regionals for digimon completely packed it sold out okay dragon ball super shared a room with us had less than half of the room filled didn't even hit close to cap didn't even hit half um so that just tells you i mean you'll, you'll still have your events and, and things like that but when people say a game is dead it just means that the player base has shrunk so significantly from what it was to what it is now it's just a tighter group that's that's all it means the game is dead but it's it's really not okay it's just you have your smaller tighter knit groups and that's all it is now if you're a content creator going making content for a game that's rapidly shrinking you're also losing a ton of viewers so keep that in mind as well so a lot of uh, our digimon content creator community has been jumping ship okay and and for good reason i mean i, I get it uh, one piece doing extremely well lorcana doing extremely well so a lot of these uh, content creators switching over to the next best thing trying to make it big uh trying to be you know the next uh, professor or um what team samurai x you know trying to get over you know a million a million subscribers 750,000 subscribers whatever it is crazy crazy amounts of subscribers they're trying to find the next thing and and beat it uh that was my original plan whenever i came into digimon hoping that digimon was gonna be that next game it was not uh so but at the time there was nothing else to really choose from now so that's one piece battle spirits that's another reason that we're kind of losing a little bit uh of player base and it's switching over now why this is super impactful right now um Bandai just released their schedule for World Tour for Los Angeles, January 27th through 28th. Um, so, Nats is going to be at uh, LA once again, end of January, two-day event. Um, but it's Bandai Card Games Fest. So, it's all of their card games in one location at one time. So, we've got ba uh, Battle Spirit Saga, One Piece, Digimon, Dragon Ball Super, um, so any of the people that have you know been jumping ship to the you know these other One Piece or Battle Spirit Saga, they basically have to choose what are they going to play. They can only play one of Bandai's card games, uh, Nats, to participate in. If they all start at the same time on that Saturday, 
you got to pick which one you want to play in. So you can't play in them all. Uh, now, side side stuff, absolutely. I don't see why you wouldn't be able to. Uh, if you go into Digimon in the main event, you lose out. Uh, and then go play One Piece side events. I don't see why they wouldn't allow you to do that. Um but yeah, so keep that in mind. Uh, that'll definitely impact things. And they also, at the same time, announced why they chose to do the invites like they did, a bunch of other information. Um, but also, it's going to be an open event. So anybody can register. Invites no longer are as important. Uh, if you did get an invite, though, uh, you get a, a two-round buy, which is so good. Uh, so I am happy for that. We also get priority registration. There is still a cap on how many players can be in the event so i don't know if they're gonna have that sign up their day you know day before like they did last time where you sign up there uh, or if they'll do it online i would hope the priority registration people can do theirs online before the event and then uh give another online time frame for other people to sign up and just you know make it like any other regional where it's just like kind of a mad dash um, but at the same time maybe making it in person would be even better um because you you the only people are going to show up are the people absolutely committed to getting into this tournament if you do it online then people can back out super easily uh and then they just wasted a slot it happens every regional um you, you start out at whatever it is what 512 i think yeah 512 and then when the actual event starts, you know, it'd be at 502, 499, something like that. Because people just drop. They decide not to play afterwards. Um, having signups in person there day before, like those are the people committed. They're, they're ready to play. So I think, you know, that's just my two cents on it either way. But at the same time, it's like nothing like spending all that money to go there and then you don't make it. Uh, thankfully, there is three other card games to choose from. Hopefully you can get in that. I mean, probably Dragon Ball Super won't fill. Oh, poor Dragon Ball Super. Um, so, yeah, maybe if you're playing these other games, definitely bring all of your decks, uh, you know, your your best deck, whatever, to participate in any of them. Just in case you don't get your signups, you can go play in the others. Also, again, side events. Maybe that would be a really cool thing to play in one event and then go do different side events for, all, like, multiple different games. That would be kind of fun. Um, so, yeah. Uh that's going to be hugely impactful. I think we'll see what happens there. Um, I think Bandai choosing to make it an open uh, Nats is almost like them admitting we don't really expect as many people showing up for Digimon as we expected. Um, it's like only doing invites for um, regionals and things like that. You know, that's going to be a pretty small group. And now making it open, of course, will make it a much larger tournament. But at the same time, I do not they're not as worried about as many people showing up to sign up when they're having all of their card games at once. So uh, I'm sure they expect One Piece to be absolutely packed. Um, and then the others will be spillover events, essentially, for them. So we'll just kind of see what happens there. Um, but that is just my two cents. I know this video is kind of long. Um of what's going on with the state of the game. Uh, do I think the game is actually dying? Not really. Again, people jump to different games, but a lot of them keep coming back to Digimon, so that's a really positive. Um, very happy for that. Um, as, as well as, you know, there's just a lot of card games to play right now, so people are just trying different things. There's no harm in that. Um, we'll kind of see where things are going. Uh, for the price drops, it's it's mostly because the investors are jumping to Lorcana where the big money is. Um, so that's I just view that as a positive all around. I'm not here to make like money selling cards. I'm here to play the game. And if I can get the cool cards for a cheaper price, yeah, I don't mind that at all. Go ahead and go to another card game and keep mine more affordable. Works for me. Um, but that's going to do it for you guys. If you have any other questions, anything I didn't cover, or any more you know, information to add that I didn't put in here, please put it in the comment section below. And uh, stay tuned. We'll cover some uh, of the RB set next week. Uh, really excited for that. Uh, Ghost Game is a really cool uh, anime if you haven't watched it. Um, so we're going to get some cool stuff out of that. Gammon, Ghoulish, Sirius. Oh, cool stuff. Really cool designs.